All right, so for this 90 Sports and Soldier video, I want to talk about the Saints in the early 2000s. I'm mostly going to be talking about the Saints in 2000 and in 2001. Now, back then, I was a Rams fan. What happened is they had some players I liked uh, when they sucked in the 90s, and all of a sudden, they became good. And then won the Super Bowl in 1999. And this rivalry between the Saints and Rams in the early 2000s, I think is the most underrated rivalry ever. You know, things got really chippy between the two teams. They really hated each other. After the whistle, there were some activities going on afterwards. And it was a very intense rivalry at the time. And like I said, I think it's the most underrated rivalry ever. So anyways, I wanna leave off uh, with the Saints in the 90s from my previous video. And, you know, I wanted to start off with Mike Dick. Now, Mike Dick, I know he was kind of like a sideshow for the Saints. I talked about how his brand was like too much to coach a Saints team and just became overwhelming. And what happened is Dicka, now one thing I'll admit about Dicka, he knows how to install toughness into his team. He knows how to install a physical brand of football, which he did. And, you know, he was there for only three years, and two of his first round draft picks were offensive linemen and Chris Naoli and Kyle Turley. And um, the Saints, they had a very good offensive line. They were very good in the trenches on both sides. The offensive line had uh, Naoli, Turley. They also had Hall of Famer Willie Rolfe. And then Jerry Fontenot, who Dick knew from Chicago. He was signed as free agent in 97. He was known for his leadership qualities. And they also had Wally Williams. And then on the defensive line, they had Darren Howard, uh, Leroy Glover, Joe Johnson, and Big Norman Hand. And like I said, in the trenches, this team was good. And I think some of that, or you know, maybe a greater portion, has to be credited to Mike Dicka. So anyways, the Saints, um, you know, they were tough on defense in 99, but the offense was a problem. And coming to the season, I didn't think much about the Saints. Now, the team I was worried about was the Panthers in 2000 because of their offense. Now, Steve Berline, I admit, um, you know, Steve Berline, he had a career year in 1999. And even though he's getting older, um, you know, that was his best year ever. And he was into his late 30s. I still thought Carolina was a dangerous team, but Berline, he wasn't able to replicate his success as 2000 be the year for the Saints, which I'll obviously get more onto um, as this video progresses. But anyways, so 2000 Rams had a horrible defense this year. The Rams got out to a 6-0, um, um, got out to a 6-0 record. Warner then, he broke his pinky finger. He had to sit out, but Trent Green, he played well. So as the season goes on, the Rams have found themselves at 8-3, and, and the Saints, meanwhile, were 7-4. So here's what happened. The Saints, they lost Jeff Blake to the previous week due to a foot injury, and the Rams are 8-3. and three. They had Trent Green. So... The Saints, they turned to Aaron Brooks, who was in a second year. He had, he had not started a game before this uh, game against the Rams. And Aaron Brooks uh, going up against the defending Super Bowl champs on the road. And the Saints won this game. And, you know, what happened during the 2000 Saints is start off at 1-3. and three, Then they won six in a row. It took me a little bit later to recognize, yeah, okay, this is a pretty good team, the Saints team, which um, I admit I failed to do. But anyways, as the season um, progressed and as it finished, Saints wound up clinching the division um, before week 17 games. They were at 10 and 5. And meanwhile, the Rams are at 9 and 6. So here's the situation. The Saints, like I said, they already clinched the division. They had a chance to get the number two seed. Um, they were playing the 12 o'clock games, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time, while Minnesota, who if they would have lost, then Saints would have won. Saints would have got that second seed to buy at the time. But um, the Rams, they're on the outside looking in. So what they needed, they needed Detroit to lose to not a good Chicago team. Chicago wound up beating Detroit on the road thanks to a last second field goal by Paul Edinger uh, from 54 yards out. So the Rams, all they do is win in their end. And so the Saints, of course, um, you know, they wanted to knock the Rams out of the playoffs. I'm sure many teams wanted the Saints to win because the Rams are still a very dangerous team. But anyways, what happened is Kurt Warner, he got knocked out. That aggressive Saints defense. And um, the Rams are one up winning 26 to 21. So in the wildcard playoffs, it's going to be the three seed Saints going up against the six seed Rams. So here's what happened. Um, I didn't know this, but later on I found out more about it. Is that prior to the game, there was, uh, the Saints they were doing some like voodoo rituals to kind of cleanse the Superdome of some evil spirits because the Saints prior they hadn't won a playoff game. They're own three in the Superdome. Um, own four in playoff games prior to that. And by the way, I think that's awesome. New Orleans is awesome. I've never been to New Orleans, but um, it just seems like such an awesome place. So much love to New Orleans. But anyways, the Rams got out to a 7-0 lead. They looked like the greatest show down on turf, the you know typical Rams. But then all of a sudden, the Saints, they got out to a 31-7 lead heading into the fourth quarter. Now, I just want to say um, Joe Horn, which I'm going to talk more about later on. He was a top wide receiver. He was injured early in the game. And Ricky Williams, he did not play in this game. But what happened is Willie Jackson, I'm a huge Florida Gators fan. Willie Jackson, my second favorite Florida Gator wide receiver of all time. He had a career day. He went off and it broke my heart seeing Willie Jackson uh, playing so good being a Gators fan. But anyways, uh, the Saints that got to 31-7 lead, Aaron Brooks just looked awesome. He was, he played really well. He just looked awesome. 
and I can't remember when exactly, but I know I turned off the game at some point. And then I wound up going back. I was like, okay, wow, the Rams down 31-7 in the fourth quarter. They're making a comeback. You know, Marshall Falk was just awesome. Kurt Warner threw his beautiful dime to Oz Hakeem. And all of a sudden, before you know it, the Rams down 31-28. So here's what happened. Um, the Rams had forced the Saints with three and out with a little under two minutes left to go. And the Saints had a punt. Now, I think many people at this time are thinking, okay, the Rams are going to score and win this game because of how well the Rams are playing or how well the Rams' offense is going. And I thought there was... Uh, no doubt, like, yeah, the Saints are not going to be able to stop them. But what happened is the Saints punt away. As Hakeem, he muffed the punt. The Saints recovered. And there, the Saints won the first playoff game. So after the 2000 season, Saints won two, Rams won one. So anyways, heading to the 2000 season. So here's the situation. The Saints, they were a trendy Super Bowl pick. And I think I would have to agree with it because I thought the Saints were the most well-rounded team. The defensive and offensive lines of the Saints, they were just nasty in the trenches. You know, the linebacking core, the Saints, they had linebackers, and the Saints had players in the secondary. Now, the Saints, they somehow just magically got a number one receiver in Joe Horn, who just, he was a fifth-round pick of the Chiefs. He didn't do nothing. Kansas City came over to Saints in 2000. He was a number one wide receiver. He was very, um, I would say brash. He would talk a lot. You know, I'm sure Saints fans love him and stuff. Later on, I, I enjoyed to like him, too. I like Joe Horn. Just at that time, I did and, uh, you know, even though Ricky Williams, he struggled with injuries and they drafted Deuce McHale. So I thought they were still able to run the ball. But the thing was Aaron Brooks. I'm like, okay, the Saints found a quarterback. Like, I thought very highly of Aaron Brooks. Now, here's the thing. In the 90s, is an era of where quarterbacks, they sucked. And seeing Aaron Brooks make his first start, make his first five starts, he looked really good. Passed for over 400 yards against Denver, made a, had a comeback win against the 49ers. And, you know, like I said, usually in the 90s, like, it was not a good decade for de developing quarterbacks as typically I heard this somewhere that basically your first year you're allowed to suck second year um you know they want to see improvement but third year you have to really understand the playbook and really understand how to play a position but with like Culpepper Dante Culpepper Donovan McNabb and Aaron Brooks like their second years they're playing they played really well now the interesting thing is I thought Aaron Brooks was the best out of all of them I thought you know throwing from the pocket his awareness his poise in the pocket um, reading, you know, going through progressions. Better McNabb, who, you know, obviously a very good quarterback, um, was kind of in a more controlled passing uh, system. And then Dante Culpepper, I just always thought he held on to the ball too long, but he threw some beautiful passes. He threw some great passes, but I just thought Aaron Brooks was better than those two at the time. Um, of course, I'd probably wind up being wrong about that. And, you know, part of that is also this because his performance in the playoffs against the Rams was just awesome. And, um, that's kind of also stuck with me, even though it was against a horrible defense. But anyways, okay, so here we go. 2001 season. I still couldn't let. I still didn't like the Saints. I didn't, didn't, didn't like the Saints, and they annoyed me. So, um, as the season went on, you know, the Rams found themselves at six and zero. Warner was healthy. Um, the Saints were three and two, so they wound up meeting in St. Louis. And what happened is the Saints won 34-31. And um, the Rams had come into eight turnovers, but although I should be thinking, okay, the Rams, they lost the Saints on the last second field goal, I should be thinking, okay, despite eight turnovers, you know, the Rams almost won that game. But as a Rams fan, I didn't think like that. It's like, can the Rams beat the Saints? I don't know what it is about the Saints. They annoy me like crazy and the Rams can't beat them. And that was my thoughts. So, you know, from 2000, 2001 up to this point, the Saints had three wins, the Rams had one win. So after that victory, what happened is, is that the um, Saints were playing the Jets at home. And the Jets had a 16-9 lead late. The Saints, they were um, it was second and three on their own, like, five-yard line. So they could still pick up the first time without getting a touchdown. And, like I said, second and three, Aaron Brooks, he ran for, like, a two-yard game. But what happened is Jets safety, Damon Robinson, he kind of gave, like, a cheap shot up high to the head. Actually, it was a cheap shot to the high to the head of um, Aaron Brooks. And what happened is Kyle Turley came out of nowhere. He got mad. He has this um, mentality like, you got to protect your quarterback. you got to protect your quarterback. So he rips off the helmet of uh, Damon Robinson and chucks it. It was a 15-yard penalty. So besides being third and one, wound up being third and 16. And the Saints failed to get a touchdown. And I'm just, yes, implode, implode. I can't stand the Saints. I don't like the Saints. They're getting the best of the Rams right now. Implode, implode. And that's what I was thinking. As the season kept going on, basically the Rams found themselves at 10 and 2. The Saints found themselves at 7 and 5. They went to play each other again this time Super Bowl. And you know what? Warner, he was he wasn't really healthy this season. He had some issues with his thumb, but Warner looked like the old Warner on the greatest show on turf is they played really well. Now, the Rams win this game. I was excited because like, okay, I thought the Rams were back. Now the only thing I say about this game is that um, there was a pass interference called. Now, okay, excuse me, let me go back. Sorry. 
The Sunday, this is a Monday night game, but the Sunday game, what happened was there was the bottle gate between the Jaguars and the Browns and Cleveland fans that got mad because a play was ran and the rest decided to go back to the previous play before that to go ahead and review it and it, the play was not in the Browns' favor, so fans threw bottles and wound up being called bottle gate. So the very next Monday night was this game and there's a bad PI called and then fans, New Orleans fans that kept throwing bottles um, on the field. Probably not as bad, but they threw bottles on the field. I'm like, yeah, Saints, implode, implode, implode. Yeah, do bad, do bad, do bad. So that's what I was thinking at the time. So here's the thing, after that loss, I don't know what happened to the Saints. I respect the Saints because like they were nasty, they were mean. I thought they were a well-rounded team, but the last three games of the 2001 season, I don't know what happened. They just got blown out like badly and the Saints didn't make the playoffs and the Rams wound up going to Super Bowl, but they lost. Okay, so um, here's the situation now. They had added the Houston Texans, so what happened is there was an even 32 teams. So what happened is that's when they made the eight divisions. So the Rams and Saints were no longer in the division of the NFC West as the Saints went to the NFC South and Rams, they stayed in the NFC West. But anyways, um, you know, that rivalry is like kind of over. And I was like, I love that rivalry. But the thing I want to get to is like, I don't know what happened to the Saints because over the next three years, they were around that 500 mark and I thought their talent was better than that. And maybe I'm wrong. And Saints fans, I'd love to hear from you. Like, what am I missing? And the bigger thing is, like I said, I thought Aaron Brooks was like on his way to being a very good quarterback. Like, I'm like the Saints, they found the quarterback, but he really just didn't really progress. And I mean, 2002 Saints, they start off six and two. The offense was really good. Like they were tremendous. They were scoring a lot of points, but they, after six and two, they wound up make, not making the playoffs. And Aaron Brooks, you know, I know statistically his best year was in 2003, but it just seemed to me that he didn't really progress. Like it just either got level or his play like kind of went down um, somewhat. And I don't know exactly what it was because I thought, you know, Aaron, like I said, Aaron Brooks was on the track to being a very good quarterback. But, um, you know, Saints fans, tell me what, Saints fans tell me what I'm missing about that. But um, like I said, 2002, 2003, 2004 Saints, they were around that 500 mark. And then... And I don't really want to get into 2005 because it was just a horrible situation, Hurricane Katrina. And that was a, like, um, you know, the Jim Hazlitt era of the Saints. And like I said, I couldn't stand those teams, but I respect them a lot. That's why I say, you know, what are your thoughts about this? And like I said, Saints fans, what did I miss about the Saints? Did I overvalue the Saints? Did I overestimate? Did I think that they're much better than what they really were? And, um, you know, I'd like to hear about you from uh, about Aaron Brooks and the Saints during this period. Thank you so much for your interest in this video. And, um, you know, so I repeated some things, but I just want to say thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you.